guys, welcome back to Legit Streetcars and welcome to a big channel update, a year-end channel update, if you will. A lot has happened in 2021, from me acquiring the Legit Street Quarters to me quitting my full-time job to do this full-time. And I haven't always been the best at updating you guys on cars. So some of them I have sold, but I still have like 12 or 13 or something like that in the fleet. And I got a lot of questions all the time in the comments section and on Instagram, what happened to this car, what happened to that car? Those questions will be answered in this video and we'll talk shop as well because I'm still moving stuff from the original Legit Street Cars Garage. This place is a total mess right now. So I'll update you a little bit on that and we'll go to legit street quarters, of course. And we're gonna start off with one of the most current and up-to-date cars, the CL65. So let's go ahead and kick this party off with the last remaining project car that is still at my home garage. That is, of course, the 2005 CL65 AMG. I bought this from a guy named Tyler Hoover in Kansas, and it had some issues. It had an engine oil leak, an ABC hydraulic suspension pump leak, and a bunch of other things. I drove it home in February of this year in a snowstorm. It was absolutely horrible. It broke down a million times. And then over the last like eight or nine months, it's been a part in a thousand pieces in my garage. I had to take apart the entire engine for a $1 O-ring that failed. And then the last, I think three or four episodes have been dealing with a horrible suspension issue. I will leave the playlist down below. If you guys have not seen it, I highly recommend it. If you have seen it, you know how important it is for me to see this right here. A little bit of a gap from the body and the top of the tire. This has just been an absolute nightmare. The suspension was slammed. We ran into every issue you could possibly run into on this kind of suspension. And quite honestly, I feel like I know ABC suspension better than most after this project. So not all was lost, but I love this car, 135,000 miles. We put bigger turbos on it, ported heads, a few other things. I have hearts laying around kind of all over. This really expensive carbon fiber thing is laying on a Christmas wreath. But anyway, this car runs and drives and most importantly, Importantly, the suspension works, so I will be bringing this to legit street quarters, probably not today, but in the next few days. I have to gather up all the remaining parts and kind of get organized, but the CL65 is now complete as far as the mechanical repair portion of this series, and we're going to be moving on to performance very soon. And speaking of performance, this is my latest purchase, my latest daily driver and this is a 2016 P100D Tesla. So this is the one that runs like a 10.5 in the quarter mile, 2.40 to 60. It does have the now $10,000 option of full self driving. So you see the little cameras all over the place and the fender and the pillar there and just everywhere. I think there's like eight of them. And I bought this car with some issues. I believe it was the cheapest one in the entire country. 47,000 mile car, one owner. And I was able to fix everything up in one video. Everything will be linked down below. But if you guys want to see one video on my Tesla, I don't know how many more there will be. It is a Tesla. There's not much you can do to these cars and it is perfect right now. So it's one of my start to finish videos. So even if you guys hate Tesla, I think you'd enjoy that video video. We do a lot to this car. DIY repairs. We add carbon fiber. We bring it to the body shop. We bring it to the detail shop. It encompasses everything in one video to make this Tesla what it is right now. Black chrome wheels. It's Perfect. And this one, unlike my rebuilt title Tesla, will supercharge so I can take it on trips. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel since the very beginning, you know that this was my daily driver when I first started the channel. Actually, I think the opening scene of my very first YouTube video is me driving this car, or at least in the first couple of minutes, I'm driving this car to check out my friend's Mustang. I am not in the Trans Am. It is way too quiet for that. I'm in my Chevy Bolt. This will probably be one of the most boring rides you guys ever go with me. So this is a 2013 Chevy Volt. It's my second Chevy Volt, and I sold it to a family member who happens to be here right now. So here it is. I think it has about 50,000 miles on it now. It's practically in mint condition. This family member really takes care of their cars. So it normally stays in the garage. It's perfect. I still love these. And before the used car market went crazy, you could pick one up for like eight or $9,000. It is a phenomenal car for that kind of money. And I'm glad that it comes over and visits every once in a while. Moving on to something completely different is my 2002 True Blue Metallic 
Ford F-150 SVT Lightning. This has always been on my bucket list and I found one in this one year only color. They only made about a thousand of these. I bought it with like 82,000 miles on it. I think it has like 85,000 miles on it, which is a lot for me to drive a vehicle in about six months because I have so many of them. But I actually use this truck. I use it a lot. So if you guys followed the series on this one, you know that it currently has blown head gaskets. Like that is coolant in there in the wheel that keeps on dripping down from the coolant reservoir. Anytime you go into boost, it pressurizes the cooling system. The head gaskets are blown, but this thing runs and drives perfectly if you don't get into boost. And I need the truck, so I don't have time for it to be down with the engine ripped apart. So I'll be taking it apart in the winter. It's two wheel drive and it's rust free. It's just too nice. So I'll be doing that project soon. But for now, I use this quite often to pack things into the back and move them to my shop and help my family members move and normal pickup truck stuff. There's even a moving blanket permanently in the back that gets rained on all the time. It smells awesome. But anyway, this is my SVT Lightning. I absolutely love this truck. It will be in tip top condition after I rip the engine apart. And I hope you guys are as excited about that series as I am. All right, so I just got the legit three quarters. I have a few cars out here to show you, but first we're going in. And here we are at Legit Street Court. Yeah, we got it, back door. Back door is closed. So we have a few cars here, the Rolls Royce, the BMW, but first we're gonna start off with the TA. But before we get to the TA and the class that I just got done teaching on the E30 BMW, I gotta let you guys know about the biggest blowout sale of the entire year on the Armor Shield 9 DIY ceramic coating kit. So this is a crazy Black Friday deal. You're gonna get up to 45% off the kits, plus they're gonna throw in free products, including the prep shampoo, so this is gonna eliminate the need to spray the car down with rubbing alcohol before you coat it, and their normal car shampoo. Both of these create a lot of foam they're very high quality and they're normally $17 each. You're gonna get these for free. You can also get free microfibers and my favorite, these super plush buffing towels. Once you use these, you'll never wanna use anything else. These are also gonna be included free depending on how much you buy. So one kit is enough to coat a normal sized car like the Trans Am. If you have an SUV or truck, you're definitely gonna wanna get two. And if you don't know much about ceramic coating, I'll leave a four minute tutorial video that I made linked down below, but it's super easy to do this after you've washed your car. You're simply gonna apply the ceramic coating to the supplied applicator pad, wipe it on, wait a minute, and wipe it off. The results are amazing. You're gonna get a deep, glossy shine on any painted surface. Now, after a car is cleaned, I can typically coat an entire car, including the glass and including the wheels so brake dust doesn't stick to them, in a grand total of maybe two hours. It's very easy to do, and it's one of the best trim stores on the market. This is definitely my favorite part. It will shed years off the look of your car and it'll actually last more than a few months like some of the other products out there. So coat your car before the winter hits. Take advantage of this deal. It is by far the best deal of the entire year and it ends November 30th, 2021. All you got to do is click on my link in the video description box or in the comment section to get the Black Friday special. So with that, that. Let's talk about the TA. Okay, so my 2001 WS6 Trans Am, I bought this when I was 18 years old. This was a total dream car of mine. If you guys saw the last video I made on an LT1 Trans Am, you know that that car was basically the inspiration for me buying this car. So I'd always wanted an LS1 WS6 Trans Am in high school. So literally I graduated from automotive tech school on a Friday. I started with Mercedes-Benz of Chicago as an apprentice technician on a Wednesday and and I bought this car on a Monday. So they sold me this car back then with a co-signer, of course. I financed the entire thing. I remember it was $462 a month for six years. I didn't care at all. I was only making $15 an hour, but I was living at home with mom. So I bought it anyway. And then I moved out a year later. I should have stayed with my mom forever. This car would have been much faster, much quicker. But nonetheless, I got a second job. So I became a flat rate journeyman technician. Within 11 months, I was making some pretty good money. And then at age 21, I got my real estate license just for the sole purpose of modifying this car. So this car has been one of my biggest motivators 
in my entire life. When I went to tech school out of high school, I didn't really do too well in high school, but I knew that if I did really well in tech school and got a good job, that this was gonna be my reward to myself. So I got straight A's in tech school, Mercedes hired me, I became a journeyman in less than a year, and it was basically all for this car. I wanted to make it go faster, so I got my real estate license, and literally every single house that I sold, this is before the 08 bubble, so like I was selling houses left and right, everyone at work bought a house for me. Every commission check I got, went into this car until it became a nine second turbo car, including blowing up a couple of motors, going through different turbos. It used to be a manual, now it's an automatic, a Ford nine inch rear end. So I put a ton of money into this car in my younger years. I love it, I still have it. It drives around with the AC on, no roll cage in it. It is a legit street car. It is the motivation for the name of my channel. I didn't like tin can race cars, I wanted a legit street car. So I built this. That's the name of my channel. I love this car. I'll probably never sell it. And uh, let's start it up. All right, here's a cold start. And yes, it really does have a thousand horsepower. It dynoed at 902 to the wheels through an automatic. So probably a little bit more than a thousand. So it's a 370 cubic inch LS engine with an 88 millimeter comp turbo that's now been on here for like eight years. This thing's been turboed forever, like probably 12 years at this point. And it's very reliable. It just works really well. It makes a ton of power and it doesn't really let me down. So you really cannot go wrong. And it's very quiet, quite honestly. It's got a boost activated cutout. So it has a four inch dump right off the turbo and it just opens automatically when I get into boost. It's pretty cool. But just driving around, it sounds like a normal catback exhaust LS1 car. So I'll leave you guys a video link down below. It's one of my earlier videos where I show my top five favorite modifications. This thing has a trans brake where you actually use the cruise control stock to control that. The boost activated cutout in itself is cool. It's got a nice boost controller and a bunch of other cool little knickknacks that I've added to this car, but nothing that changes the way it drives. So anyone could hop in this car, drive it around, and it just feels like a normal F body. So I do have some ideas for some more video content on this car. I built it before YouTube, so I haven't really made too many videos on it, but I also haven't driven this car much in the last three or four years, so I'm thinking about changing up the suspension. I don't really drag race much anymore. I might put a six-speed manual back in it. I don't know. But anyway, there is my 01 WS6. Now, moving on to a couple of things. This is my E30 BMW. It's a 1989. It hadn't run in about 10 years. I was given this car for free, and it had a stuck valve. The brake lines were rotted out and a bunch of other stuff, but I got it running and driving really nice. It's actually a pretty nice car mechanically so far. It needs an exhaust system and, and new brakes all the way around and stuff like that, but it's not that bad. And I actually just got done teaching a class to a bunch of six to 12 year olds on how to change a flat tire. I just taught a bunch of neighborhood kids some basic automotive stuff here at Legit Street Quarters. So I have three kids of myself, so I'm involved with a bunch of kid stuff in the neighborhood. So I offered my trade to the parents, invited them all out here and went over every Everything, all the basics of changing a flat tire and it was pretty cool because I don't know if this spare had ever been used and everything was complete in the trunk so it was like the only car that I owned that had a complete spare with all the tools and everything so that was a ton of fun and I showed the Trans Am off a little bit in that as well just to show the difference between lug nuts and lug bolts so the kids had a blast and now these kids who physically probably can't change a flat tire on their own at least know how to do it so they can coach whoever's driving them around on how to change a flat in an emergency situation but anyway uh, the E30 BMW, I'm actually gonna have a raffle for this car. So I haven't set it up just yet. There's a lot that goes into it, but I'm gonna raffle this car off. 100% of the proceeds are gonna go to an MS charity. So someone, one of you guys out there is eventually gonna win this car. And if you want a sneak peek at when that is gonna start, when that raffle is gonna start, just follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Legit Street Cars. And moving on to another BMW, another car that is in my new favorite car color, some kind of blue. This is my 07 335i. I have been going back and forth on whether or not I'm really gonna bring this back to the channel or not. I kind of did everything I thought I was gonna do to it. And I daily drove it for like five months and it was perfect, like no lights on, nothing. So I did a lot of work on this. This car needs some cosmetic love, lots of rock chips in the front. So basically the front end should be painted if you want it to be perfect. And the wheels are not in the best of condition. They're pretty much all bent like that. I have brand new wheels, identical wheels to this, but in 19s. So I gotta order up tires. The only thing left performance-wise that I'm thinking about doing would be larger hybrid turbos. So I have dual fuel pumps. It runs on E85 
85. It has a nice tune, downpipes, intercooler, intake, and stuff like that. Probably about a 420 wheel horsepower car with a six speed manual, and it's a blast. Everything works, air conditioning. The interior is in excellent condition, although really dirty, but it's the perfect spec with the black sports seats and the aluminum, brushed aluminum trim, push button start, everything. I love this thing, it's awesome. And that's why it's still here. I just haven't determined yet if I wanna make more videos on it. So let me know in the comments section. Do you guys wanna see some more N54 BMW content? Moving back over yonder, we have my E55 wagon, the LSC wagon. This is a 2005. I think they made 150-ish that year, and then the next year they made another like 40, I think there's like 190 something of these made overall, so an ultra rare car. I had two of these, so you guys may remember I had one with like 230,000 miles, and I did sell that to my friend Mark at Young Timers Garage, and then he has recently sold it as well. That was a great car, but this is my keeper right here, and it's just in the air right now, because I have a thud noise in the front, I gotta figure out, but other than that, this guy is in excellent condition. I drive it around all the time. It's not leaking anything. It has a few tasteful mods like a larger crank pulley and some mid-length headers that you can kind of see over there. And of course a tune, but I'm thinking about going nuts with this guy because this is a keeper. This is similar to my Trans Am in the sense that I don't have really any plans of selling it. This is a total dream car. I've wanted one ever since I became a Mercedes-Benz apprentice technician in 2003 when the W211 came out. I went for a ride in E55 and I was just blown away and I thought the wagon was even cooler. So I finally have one. These things have skyrocketed in value lately. So I'm thinking about long tube headers and a Whipple supercharger and really going nuts. This isn't a super low mileage car. It has like 146,000 miles. It already has modifications, which is nice because this is gonna be another legit street car. I'm not just gonna let this guy sit around. I'm gonna drive it. I'm gonna modify it. I'm gonna do whatever I want with it, but I'm gonna keep it nice as well. We repainted about half the car. It's wrapped in clear PPF, ceramic coated, the whole nine yards. So I want to keep this pristine, but also modified at the same time. So a Whipple supercharger from VRP may be in order. Next up, we have by far the oldest car in the legit streetcars fleet, and that is my 1961 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud II. I bought this in South Carolina, drove it to Florida to meet up with a bunch of my YouTuber friends at the Amelia Island Concourse Car Show. And I had a blast basically using this as my rental car for like four days in Florida. I drove it everywhere to the grocery store, wherever we needed to go, we took this. Now, it has a lot of issues that I'm now fixing. It had these issues when I was in Florida as well, um, but I'm taking apart the brake master cylinder to rebuild it. I'm filming that video right now. And then we have a few other mechanical items to fix. But right now, the seats are all out of the car and I sent them out to get reupholstered and it's gonna be a couple of months before I get them back. So in the meantime, I'll fix up all the mechanical stuff so that the car is practically done as soon as the seats come in and they bolt back in in like a half hour. So that'll be a lot of fun. Once the seats come in, the car will be done and I cannot wait to drive it again with functioning brakes and a few other things fixed and with seats that aren't all torn up. So I do like this car, but it's not a keeper. After I'm done with this car, I will list this and sell it. I think it's worth about like $45,000, $50,000, something like that. Um, but it's a really fun car. It's just nothing I've never been super into. It was a good deal. I thought it'd be a lot of fun and it was, and I'm gonna be moving on probably in like the spring of 2022. Before we head outside, just a few things on legit street quarters, I've brought over a few Few pieces of equipment from my home garage like the trans jack there in the distance. I got a nice John Doe Industrials oil drain. That thing is sweet. Uh, I have to hang up that reel for the air hose so it's not laying on the ground like it is right now. And actually a subscriber helped me build this table. You know who you are. Thank you so much. This thing is amazing and I put a stainless steel top on it. I still have to screw that down. And I had another local subscriber reach out to me and he had a few 100 year old vices that were made in Chicago. You can see Chicago's written right there. So I gotta clean this up and mount it. I'm so excited about that as well. And then of course I have my cabinet full of fluids, mostly Amsoil stuff. And I need to get another cabinet for like specialty tools, like compression testers, coolant pressure testers, all sorts of stuff that fit in little plastic boxes like that. They need to be put away as well. I bought a nice sink right there that I can store all of my detergents in. Oh, and this is kind of funny. So this shop has two bathrooms. This was a pretty nasty shop bathroom. 
and I don't really need it. I have a nice bathroom next to my office, so now I am storing a bunch of parts and chemicals. I gotta figure out how to properly dispose of coolant. That's all from the Lightning. There's a Magnuson supercharger that you guys will see at some other point. All right, let's just close this up. Oh, and an engine cover for something. But yeah, I have a nice bathroom here, so there's really no need for that. I haven't really done anything in this customer waiting room slash lounge area, whatever you wanna call it, but eventually we're gonna have a big screen TV. I'm gonna put a sleeper couch in there and uh, make it kind of man cavey. I don't know, we'll do something. My office is kind of a mess, but I do have a TV for the security system. I bought a fridge. I have an old microwave on the ground and uh, yeah, another flat screen TV mount that'll go outside. This desk came with the place. It's a little beat up, but it works. And I bought a nice chair from Costco. So your basic dude office, I guess, at this point. And there's even a mustard pack laying on the table. Oh, and shout out to my friend, Mike. He made this for me. The guy is a beast with woodworking. So he whittled this out of wood, added carbon fiber. This is definitely going up on the wall. And Mike is one of the best Mercedes-Benz technicians I've ever known and also one of my best friends. So shout out to Mike, everybody. Say hello to Mike in the comment section. All right, so heading outside, we have the Tesla. You guys have already seen that. We have this person's Tesla that's not mine. And then we have three of my vehicles here. Now, you guys may have remembered in the reveal of the Lexus that one of my neighbors is big into Toyota and he has a few abandoned Toyotas right here. Actually, this one's not abandoned. It looks the most abandoned, but he drives this one more than any of them and the plate's missing off of it now, so maybe this is now abandoned. I don't know what's going on, but that one has been sitting here for many, many years. I guess this one will be, and so is this. This thing has like 50,000 miles on it, but it just sits and rots away. But anyway, here are the cars that I own that sit outside in my parking lot. Although the Caprice, it gets to be in the shop every once in a while. Right now, it doesn't actually run. I have to jump it off. The alternator is bad. It's got a flat tire. This has been leaking ever since I bought it. I have to get new tires for this thing. Um, but I really like the Caprice. This is another one where I'm kind of done with it. I dropped the engine. I installed a big camshaft, some really nice headers, a converter. It's got nitrous and a center console now, which is a big deal. And I love this car. I'm kind of done making videos on it, but I really like it. It's one of those things where, I don't know, what is this worth, like 12 grand? I'd rather just have the car. And it sounds absolutely insane. Check this out. For now, I think I'm just gonna keep this car. It's just too much fun. Uh, moving on, we have my 2000 ML55 off-road machine. This is another car that I don't have really any interest in selling. I know a bunch of other YouTubers are pretty much selling their entire fleet, but I just, I have no desire to do it. I wanna keep all of these cars. I've already basically outgrown this shop. I need, I need more room. But here's the thing with the ML. I paid like $3,500. I put a little bit into it to lift it and we built this custom front bumper, some big tires, tires and it just rocks off-road. It is unstoppable. But again, what am I gonna get for this thing? Like seven, eight grand? Or I can just have a sweet AMG off-roader that isn't perfect. It's got like 150,000 miles. Some of the paint has faded. It has some rust on the bottom, which honestly is the way that I wanted an off-road rig. So I can take this on the trails. I can scratch it up. It can get dented, whatever. It's not a collectible anymore. And it just keeps on trucking. So to me, this is more fun than like a 50 or $60,000 Rubicon. I would absolutely hate taking one of those off-road and pushing it to its limits and scratching it and denting it and feeling horrible that I just destroyed my nice newer car. Now, at the moment, this has a leaking power steering rack. It leaks really bad. If I fill it all the way up, it'll be gone within a few miles. You can see the puddle there. And unfortunately, they have started to stop making parts for this car. So I have to find a used rack and people are gouging. They're like four or $500 used on eBay. So anyway, I'm gonna see if I can rebuild this rack 
That's pretty much all it needs at this point, other than a new battery just from sitting. But I love the ML, no plans on selling this guy either. That brings us to this. I just threw a cover on it because I haven't revealed this guy to you just yet. Place your guesses down below. I plan on getting this one done really quick. This is gonna be another giveaway car. Okay, so I think we went over like 10 or 11 cars. There are two more that aren't in this video. One would be the 93 Toyota Camry that is sitting at Fluid Motor Union in Naperville, Illinois, just in their parking lot. I don't really know what to do with it. I have a title for it. I might just kind of give it away to like Victory Auto Wreckers if you guys are from around here or any local junkyard. Um, I don't know. Do you guys want a 93 Camry? I, it doesn't really run anymore. I haven't tried starting it in a long time, but it ran in the last video. It just had a, it had a rod knock, so it needs an engine. But anyway, 93 Camry. I still have the 5.9 liter 98 Jeep Grand Cherokee, but I shipped it away to an auction in Wisconsin. So I technically own it, but it's running on the block. It'll be gone soon. Um, that was one of those deals where I just didn't have time for it. I was done with the series and my friend who sells cars was bringing a whole truckload of cars to an auction. And he's like, hey, for $100, I'll throw your Jeep on the truck and we'll bring it to the auction and then you're, you're done with it basically until it sells. So I'm like, okay. Um, so anyway, done with the Jeep, love that. But again, I gotta move on from some of these cars. So uh, I'm basically selling that one as we speak. Uh, the Cadillac Escalade, my wife's Escalade, we actually don't have it anymore, but that is gonna require an entire video. Uh, that truck is gone, unfortunately. So I am looking for a new daily driver for my wife right now. And just a couple of other cars that I get asked about often, the white C63 sold that a while ago, the original 2003 E55 AMG sold that a while ago, my CDI E320 diesel sold that a while ago, that one had kind of a cult following, love that car. Um, but it is gone. The EcoVet, my 40 mile per gallon C5 Corvette, sold that a while ago. The guy I sold it to got plates that said 40 MPG. He got 40 MPG all the way home, like 12 hours away to Kentucky or Florida or wherever he lived. Uh, so those cars are gone. My 400,000 mile M5, that was gone a long time ago. It's changed hands like four more times. It's had a blower strap to it since then. Um, and I think it's got like 430,000 miles now. It's still going strong. Okay, I'm literally looking through my own videos on my phone so I don't forget anything. The Lexus, I gave that one away. It's gone. Oh, the S4 Audi uh, that I got in Florida, I I honestly just wasn't into it, guys. No one else was in the comments section. Usually when I reveal a video, people seem excited in the comments. Oh man, I can't wait to see videos on that. No one wanted to see any videos on it. I drove it in Florida with Sam Crack for like four days and I just didn't like it. It wasn't that fun. And then we got another check engine light on there uh, for cam correlation codes, which could be like a 36 hour engine job, which I have no problem doing, but not on a car that I'm just, just not into. So uh, that is being flipped right back at the auction. I think it is sold already actually. Oh, people always ask me about the red M3 that I made one video on that I was abandoned in a parking lot. I never actually bought that car. I thought it was a total ripoff, honestly. Um, it needed too much and it said it had 48,000 miles on it, but it looked like it had 150. So I don't know. I just kind of walked away from that one. Let's see. I sold my silver P85D Tesla. Now I have the blue Tesla. Oh, and then I made one video on an abandoned twin turbo Supra, like a 93, 94 Supra. That wasn't my car. People always ask whatever happened to that car. It was never mine. I never intended on buying it. It was just an abandoned car that I made a video on that was going through a restoration that stalled out. Um, I never really heard much about it. I think it was getting painted the last time the guy texted me about it. So I'll try and follow up on the Supra, but I don't even think that's for sale. Uh, the Lowrider Fiero, I sold that to a guy locally and then he sold it to a big Fiero club guy who's actually gonna restore it. So that's kind of cool. The supercharged NFL Suburban, I sold that and then it sold again. The guy thought the motor was locked up, but then the guy that bought it messaged me and he's like, no, it's fine. I replaced a fuel pump relay and drove it like 6,000 miles. So that thing is still driving around Chicago, I guess. I made one video on a Charger SRT8 that was actually owned by Rich Rebuilds. It had a bad engine. He flipped it right back at the auction. That was never my car. And I don't know. I think that's about it, guys. But if you can think of anything else, let me know in the comments section if you want an update on any cars that I've missed. And I will try to respond to you to update you on everything. Um, so that is everything that's going on with me. I have a lot more planned for the channel, a lot more planned for 2022. I'm thinking about getting some help over here so I can produce more content. I know a lot of you guys have been wondering about that. Now that I'm full time, I typically only come out with one video a week and sometimes two, one on Thursday and one on Saturday. I'm trying to make that more consistent, but trust me, this is the most I can do guys. I'm at this like 50, 60 hours a week and I could pump out quicker videos like vlog style videos, but 
That's just not my style. I want a high quality video that has an actual beginning, middle, and end where we accomplish something. And sometimes it takes me all week to film it. Like the Tesla video, I have about 100 hours into that one video. So these videos take a very long time to produce, to fix the cars, to edit, and everything. So I do plan on getting some help though in the shop so that I can pound out some more good quality videos. Just a real quick example, when I show you guys like doing brakes on one side of a car, I don't need to do the other side. I don't show it on video. So if I had like an assistant here that could just knock that out while I'm doing something else that's gonna be in the video, that would help me big time. And I think I found a pretty good team, a couple of guys to help me with a lot. So I already have an editor, Max, he's amazing. And I have someone else in mind to help me in the shop. But anyway, that'll all be revealed in 2022, along with many other things, many other projects coming to the channel as well. So with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed the update. I hope this answered some of your questions. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.